Well, good morning, family. Good morning, Hopalo Pole. Thank you, Jerry and Jonah, for leading us in worship. That was wonderful. And to you all that's joining us, welcome. Uh, here I am. You know, if you read my email on Friday, you kind of know my situation. And things are going well. God is good. Um, you know, I just see improvements every day. And it's day by day that, you know, mom is getting better, grandma's getting better. And so if in case you don't know, like my family came down with COVID. So what Jan and I decided was I would come and, and help because my mom and her sisters are, are caregivers for my grandma, uh, who's over 100 years old. Um, I wanted to come and help them in this whole process. And it's been it's been a lot. So thank you to all of you that are caregivers, those that are on the front line, you know, first responders. Gosh new appreciation you know what i'm saying so god bless you guys and your families and you know if you if you guys need help like please let somebody know because it it is a it's a large task to care give so god bless you guys um yeah really so thank you thank you for all you do first responders and those that are in the military as well you know military families um, pray god's blessing upon you well today we're gonna uh, talk about uh, cultivating our hearts and keeping a kingdom perspective as we continue our kingdom series you know last week we touched on briefly on where the kingdom is who the kingdom is for and how do we access the kingdom um, and how we need to chase after right in Matthew 6 33 it says Jesus tells us to chase after the kingdom or we, that's what we desire that's what we are planning on doing is chasing after the king and his kingdom and that's what I wanted to accomplish in this kingdom series to understand better the king and his kingdom uh, how many of you have ever planted anything or you know do we have any gardeners or want to be gardeners <laughs> you know depending where you live there's different kinds of soil and I remember uh, when we were planting stuff at our house I was planting grass and uh, it seemed that there was weeds that were all over the place. You know, the weeds scattered here and the weeds were growing fine. Just nothing else was growing. The weeds were growing fine and there was a, probably about a, 10 million rocks. Because as I'd rake the ground, I, I, you know, I dealt with the weeds, raking the ground, just rocks just started coming up and I got disposed of the rocks. And there was more rocks that came up and I disposed of those rocks. And it just seems like rocks just started to appear um, just endlessly and also there was a pile of rocks that someone had dumped there so there was those rocks fortunately the grass that I was planting was grass that would choke out weeds but before I started this whole process I was told to water the soil I know water the soil with all the weeds and everything yeah water the soil so that the soil would become soft and you know many times the Word of God is referred to as water so that's what we're going to do. We're going to water the soils of our heart. We're going to water the soil of our heart that God would make our hearts soft towards Him. Why don't we pray? Father, we come to You. And God, we thank You that uh, You're the water of Your Word. It will soften our hearts, God. would make our hearts more receptive and pliable to Your Word, God. We thank You. We love You. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this morning, we're going to look at a parable Jesus told concerning the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. And you might be asking, what is a parable? A parable basically is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Okay, so let's begin. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 13 and verses 1 through 23, basically. So let's just jump in. Um, Jesus, he's teaching and he says, uh, he's telling a parable. He says, listen, a farmer went out to plant some seed. As he scattered them across the field, some seeds fell on a footpath. The seeds sprouted quickly. Be, um, those seeds didn't sprout quickly some fell on a footpath the birds came and ate them okay so we see the first one uh, birds ate came and ate them the uh, other seed fell on shallow soil un with underlying rock the seed sprouted quickly but because the soil is shallow the plant soon wi withered under the hot sun since they did not have any roots they died still other seed fell on um, thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants verse 8 still other seed fell on fertile soil and they produced a crop that was 30 60 even a hundred times as much as been planted anyone with ears so if you got ears everybody got ears everybody touch your ears <laughs> anyone with ears 
um, should should hear or should listen and understand and his disciples came to him and asked why do you use parables why do you use earthly stories with this heavenly meaning you know to talk to the people and obviously the people Jesus' audience was a Agarian audience it was um, regular people probably fishers and or the people that were in his audience new farmers because that's what they did right they bartered they traded you know you're a farmer you're a fisher you um you know you do other pottery or whatever and they had this system that they were trading so they knew at least they knew if they weren't farmers themselves they knew of farmers or they knew people because that's how they that was their commerce so his disciples are asking why do you use parables right it's because it was the language and what people could understand um Right now I'm outside and you know my grandma has this garden and maybe and maybe after if I remember I'll take you on a little tour <laughs> of the backyard. But uh, anyway, Jesus replied and I thought this was interesting. In verse 11 it says this. Jesus replied, "You are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven." Family, you are permitted. Not only them, but you are permitted to understanding the kingdom the secrets of the kingdom of heaven but others are not to those who listen to my teaching more understanding will be given and they will have an abundance of knowledge but for those who are not listening even the little understanding they have will be taken from them and this is what I wanted to really focus on was these two verses I mean, I'm going to talk about a little bit more about the, the parable but I wanted to kind of sit a little bit right here he says you are permitted Jesus says you are permitted to understanding the secrets of the kingdom of heaven now obviously the disciples did not understand and maybe the people because they knew the people right they that was their that was their people that the people was like wow try go ask Jesus what are you talking about I don't understand <laughs> right so Jesus is saying you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. It's not that he was being exclusive. You know, he wasn't trying to hide the meaning. But like we talked about last week, it's our responsibility to constantly chase after the kingdom. And this, I believe, is what Jesus was referring to. He's like, you guys are permitted to understand, but you need to press in. You need to chase after the kingdom. So he says, you are permitted to understand. <clears throat> the second thing is, um, when he says that those who listen to my teaching. Now, in the original, listen, when, we, when we say listen, we're listening, right? You listen to your teacher, you listen to your parents. You may not understand, you may not comprehend, but you can listen. So what he's saying is deeper than that in what is what is meant when he says to those that are listening is to those who hold on to now this word listen means um, to hold on to or to have to to those who have my teachings or to those that hold on to my teaching more will be given and they'll have an abundance isn't that interesting not only listen right and the, the scriptures tells us about not only listening but being doers and by doers like it means like we grasp the concept and we're holding on and we're doing so Jesus is saying if we read it like this um, understanding the secrets of the kingdom of heaven to those who hold on to my teaching more understanding will be given and they will have an abundance of knowledge but to those who are not holding on right those that are not listening those that are not holding on even what little they have will be taken away maybe not taken away but how about this <clears throat> what little they perceive they know really shows that they never knew let me say that again if we think we know how to do something but we haven't actually done it we haven't put it into practice like um, you know we might watch YouTube oh I know how to do this or I know how to do that but until you actually do it or grasp and go through the things and find out hey it's not really what the instructions might have said or I might have had to put um, an adhesive here or I may have to had to adjust it the the length 
uh, maybe I might have to cut or I might have to lengthen, I might have to um, firm up or whatever the case is. Until you actually do it, you don't know the little nuances that are needed, what the little things that you might have to do to make it work. So that's what Jesus is saying. <clears throat> so he's saying that what they thought they know, the little they thought, they did not hold on to. So even that, what they perceived, they never really had. So what do we need to do? We need to actively engage oneself to know and understand the secrets. So Jesus is saying, these are the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. So to know, we need to hold on to and actively engage because the secrets of the kingdom are in plain sight. Turn to someone and say, the secrets of the kingdom are in plain sight. Amen. They are. Well, let's continue. Well, let's back up. This is because <laughs> this is my main thing, right? We, if you've been in church a long time, you might have heard these, and you might, you kind of might even tune me out. But don't tune me out, because Jesus is saying that we are permitted to understand. And you know what? This is the thing: we need to understand if we're part of the kingdom, right? Because if we only know a little bit, he's saying what you perceive will be taken away or might dissipate. What you think you have, you may not have. So we need to understand because Jesus is dropping some kingdom secrets here, okay? It says, you're permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. Those who listen, those who hold on to. Okay, now we can, I wanted to stress that point because if we don't hold on to, if we don't put into um, practice, if we don't put into action, what little we perceive, or what we think we know, we might have watched that video, we might have heard someone tell us, right? But until we actually do, we may not know or we may not have. Does that make sense? We only perceive the little we know. Okay. Verse 19. It says this. Jesus is explaining. Um, prior to this, I'm going to skip a whole passage, but Jesus basically explained that Isaiah prophesied that people would hear these things and they would reject it right they would have a they would have a, a per perception but they really wouldn't really believe right because their life would show that they didn't believe but jesus is saying to listen or to hold on to okay now let's go to verse 19. he's going to explain the parable he's going to explain the earthly story with the heavenly meaning so Jesus says in verse 19 the seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and don't understand it okay the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts so we see that those that were on the the seeds that dropped on the footpath right those seed that fell on the footpath represent those who might hear the message of the kingdom and don't understand it. So I pray that we understand. We understand God's love for us. Right? This the whole Bible is talking about God's redemptive story for us. Remember, we talked about this: that God is main character, and our lives, the story of our lives, is part of his grand narrative. Amen. So the seed that fell on the footpath represent those who hear the message of the kingdom and don't understand it. They heard the truth, but they did not, but they did not decide to hold on to it. So I, I labeled this, this um, seeds, heard, no hold. So they heard, but they never hold on to them. <laughs> right? They heard it, but hey, but you know what? I heard, but now nah, I don't know. I don't hold. Okay? So they heard, but no hold. They let it get away. They let it go. The birds stole it. Right? The enemy stole this. So the second soil, in verse 20, it says, The seed that fell on the rocky soil represents those who heard the message and immediately received it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. So it's short-lived. Their faith is short-lived due to problems or persecution. 
And in those times, um, if you're a believer, if you're following Jesus, right, you were persecuted by the religious elite. If they were following the things of Jesus, the elite would um, excommunicate them from coming to synagogue or coming to temple. So they understood that, hey, I take, I'm taking a chance if I'm following Jesus, that my religion or the religious leaders will excommunicate me from coming to temple or coming to synagogue or going to church or whatever it is. And so we see that um, when the people are hearing the message of hope from Jesus, that they receive it with great joy, but when problems arise with maybe, um, maybe political problems or religious problems or family problems, they, because their roots are not deep and they're not holding on to it, they're not holding on to the truths of God, putting into practice, they're not putting into practice the truths of the kingdom. It says that they fall away and they don't last. So I wanted to, um, I wanted to label these people problems, problems or persecution. So the first one is heard but no, but no, um, heard but no hold, right? Or hold but no, heard but, <laughs> heard but no hold, right? The second one is problems or persecution. Now let's see the third one. The third, in verse 22, it says, The seed that fell among the thorns represents those who heard God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of life or the lure of wealth, so no fruit is produced. How sad. I feel like this is probably the one that a lot of us struggle with, right? And and in this, it could be seasons of our lives, right? We have seasons that we heard God's truth and where, um, you know, we might be uh, resistant to it or the enemy might come in and steal it really quick. Or we might represent the rocky soil, which uh, problems, you know, might have overwhelmed us or concerns, right? It's so easily or people might have made fun of us or whatever, standing up for our faith. And this third one that fell among thorns, um, the worries of this life or the lure of wealth. So this, we see this seed is choked out by the worries of life or the lure of wealth. Two groups of people, extremes, right? Those that worry about not having enough and those that are drawn away by wanting more. So we see that. Um, so I, I labeled this group of seeds, worry of lack or the lure of wealth. Worry of lack or the lure, lure of wealth. So either worry not enough or you're lured away because you want more. So Jesus is hitting everybody here. He's hitting all the pressure points we see because he's the master storyteller. He's the master at life. Verse 23, the seed that fell on good soil. Doesn't this sound good? The seed that fell on good soil. May our hearts be good soil. Lord, may our hearts be good soil. The seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, even 100 times as much has been planted. And I label these, this group of soil the surrendered soul, the receptive heart. Right? And that's what we want to be is have a surrendered soul or surrendered heart to Jesus. Right? That we would have 30, 60, 100 fold um, growth or uh, yeah, harvest. And I thought, isn't this the secret of the kingdom? Hold on, hold on now. Pay attention. It's important. This is the secret of the kingdom. To hold on to the truths, right? This last soil, this fourth soil, the surrendered soul, the receptive heart, the heart of, the heart of faith. This is the secret of the kingdom. When we trust God, looking to Him, the author and perfecter of our faith, we witness the kingdom at work. Jesus, or the Holy Spirit, is the farmer, okay? The seed is the word of God. And we represent the soil. So out of the four different soils, you know, this fourth soil, the receptive soil, shows or displays the secret of the kingdom. Here's what I'm talking about. Jesus' audience were or new farmers. 
in that agrarian culture, it was considered 10 to 20 fold yield was considered a superior, a superior crop or harvest. 10 to 20, okay? 10 to 20 fold was considered superior. Jesus is saying some of the seed fell on good soil that represented those who truly hear and understand God's word have a harvest of 30, 60, even 100. I can hear the, the gasp in the audience. <gasps> 30, 60, 100. This is what? How is this possible? Jesus is dropping, right? Kingdom truth. He's dropping kingdom truth here. 30, 60, 100. <laughs> this is beyond. Remember now, having 10 and 20, that's superior. Jesus is saying, those who understand the kingdom, those who understand my kingdom teaching, the kingdom principles, they're going to have 30, 60, 100 fold yield. Jesus, Jesus' statement was kingdom multiplication. It was a supernatural harvest. Jesus dropping kingdom truth for us, for them, his original audience, for us. What is that? Maybe it's, it's not clear. When you have a receptive heart, when you have a heart, a surrendered soul to, to the Holy Spirit, you will have a heart that would, oop, you would have a heart that would have a kingdom multiplication harvest. So we need to, we need to close this. So when we evaluate our lives, the condition of the soil of our hearts, we might find ourselves lacking, choked, and even hardened, right? You might, if when we take evaluation, you might see yourselves like, oh yeah, you know what, I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm lacking, you know, I fall away from, it's, it's hard, you know, faith is hard. Sometimes I feel like, you know, man, God is not there. And does God really love me? And there's times when, you know, I, I feel choked out. My faith is really tested and I feel choked out. Um, or maybe I just don't want to hear God's word. Wherever we are, here's the thing. God loved you in your rocky, hard-hearted season of your life, in my life. God loved us in, those, in that season. And He continues to love us in whichever soil we, of our hearts that we might associate with. God loves you wherever you're at. The Bible says that He loved us while we were still sinners. Right? He loved us. So just to reiterate, the four soils was the herd but no hold, the problems or persecution, the worry of lack, or the lure of wealth, and there was the surrendered soul, right? Doesn't that just make you want to know Jesus more? That He would love us, that He would draw, he would draw us to Himself, that He would want to drop the kingdom, the, the secrets of the kingdom, the truth of God's word, 30, 60, 100 fold, beyond the natural harvest, Jesus' kingdom, right? Kingdom harvest. You know, some may take a lukewarm approach to keeping the soil of our hearts fer fertile toward God. But it's important because we know and we understand that those that perceive they had, right, even that dissipated. So important, it's important to constantly cultivate the soil of our hearts. To those who listen, or to those who hold on to in verse 12, in, in Matthew 13, 12, to those who hold on to, Jesus is saying, those who hold on to my teaching, more understanding will be given, and they will, be, they will have an abundance of knowledge. So here's, here's my challenge as we, as we final, as we close out. We need to cultivate our hearts. We need to cultivate the condition of our hearts. And how do we do that? Uh, there's so many, uh, there's so many scriptures, but the ones that just kind of kept on for me, and I hope this helps you, kept on rising to the top was Proverbs 4.23. And it says this, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. 
Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Whatever we feed it, whatever we dwell on, whatever we think about, um, whatever we listen to, whoever we, sound, we surround ourselves with, we need to guard our heart. Right? We need to um, be mindful of what we're putting in our hearts through our ears and our minds. Right? We need to guard our heart. Do you feel that your, um, your faith is starting to wither? Well, we need to guard our heart. We need to surround ourselves with those that would um, encourage us in the Lord. Right? Just like how we're doing right now. We come and we, we just hear God's word. The other scripture that I had was Psalm 139, 23 and 24. And we need to ask God to search our hearts. Right? To God, search my heart and know my heart. Right? And, and, and allowing Him to lead us in the, the way of everlasting. And my final verse was Psalm 100, or Psalm 51, sorry, Psalm 51, verse, t- verse 10. Um, this Psalm of David, and he says, To create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. If we don't cultivate our hearts, if we don't cultivate um, and be mindful of that, we might find ourselves hard hearted toward God and His truth. We might find ourselves hard-hearted towards others, right? Because we're not cultivating our hearts. We, if we don't cultivate our hearts, we might find our faith short-lived due to problems or persecution. We might find ourselves choked out by the worries of life or the lure of wealth. So it's important to cultivate our hearts. Why don't we pray? Father, we come to you right now and I thank you, God, for each person that is um, hearing this, Lord, and just that you would stir our hearts, Lord, that you would stir my heart. Why don't you pray that? Lord, stir my heart. Cultivate my heart. Ask, ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, cultivate my heart that I would have good soil, that I would see kingdom, um, kingdom harvest in my life, that I would hold on to your kingdom truth. Lord, that you would seal us, that you would help us to hold on to your kingdom truth because of your great love to us. We love you, Jesus. We invite you into our lives. Come and help till the soil in our hearts that we might receive your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. Jerry's going to lead us in a, in a song. Jerry and Jonah are going to lead us in a in song of worship and close out the service. Have a great day. Aloha. Hey guys, like I said earlier, uh, if I remembered, I'd give you a little tour around um, the garden. And, you know, uh, not, not that I'm jealous. I don't think that's, I guess, envious. I guess that's still a sin. <laughs> but the things that grow at my um, grandma's house is amazing. Uh, I just want to show you. Okay, so, and, uh, yeah, so I've been staying in this room right here. Uh, which I will not take you in because it's kind of messy. Uh, but uh, I, I'll just give you a quick panoramic. Yeah, so here is the backyard, and my set. Here's my little um, studio setup. <laughs> As you can see, right? Makeshift. But man, just, it just, so much stuff is growing and uh, like some passion fruit here. And up there was a garden and uh, just used to have all kinds of stuff. I remember as a little kid um, playing in, in grandpa's garden, uh, there's just every single vegetable um, that you don't want to eat <laughs> as a little kid. But uh, yeah, like just a little backdrop here, just kind of give you a quick uh, view. A little jabong tree and um, so things at grandma's house, this, because of the soil, the soil is so good, it grows really good, um, un, un, unlike where I live. It's like, <laughs> not anything near here. It's like, it's, it's, so, it's so opposite. But that is because the soil, of, the soil is great. And like our hearts, our hearts can be great too. When we cultivate, when we have good soil, um, hearts that, that are good towards the truths and the kingdom kingdom principles you know we can have a harvest as well 30 60 and 100 fold i hope that you guys have a great week 
and um, yeah God bless you guys I will see you next week with more information and a special announcement so hey uh, start tilling <laughs> God bless you guys Aloha